Whether you are experienced at measuring fishes or brand new to its implementations, this video will help you brush up or teach you how to measure fishes altogether. The six measurements that we'll be going over are head length, snout length, body depth, total length, fork length, and standard length. Hey guys, Koa here. So why do we measure fishes? Well, there are a lot of answers to that. Scientists like to measure fishes so as to keep an eye on species growth and development over time. That way they can monitor populations and see if they're healthy or not. Anglers have to measure fishes so as to assure that their catches conform with the wildlife gaming officials that monitor the waters in their area. Also, if you're like me and hyper-competitive, anglers want to know how big that fish is compared to other people's catches. I'm going to teach you how to measure. Did you know that ichthyologists or fish biologists have different methods for measuring fishes than most wildlife management organizations? Let me explain. Firstly, when ichthyologists measure fin fishes for a total length, that is, the most anterior tip of the snout or mouth to the most posterior part of the tail, they do not squeeze the caudal lobes together. Where most Department of Natural Resources and Government Gaming and Fishing Regulation officials suggest that the two caudal lobes are squeezed together. For example, in California, Wisconsin, and Florida, this is required for measuring fin fishes. So what does the squeezing of the caudal lobes do? Well, it just adds a little bit of length to that measurement that you're taking. So what I'm trying to get at here is that it's imperative to know why you are measuring fishes. If the fish you have caught is part of an ichthyology and marine biology study, then more than likely you should not be squeezing the caudal lobes together for a total length. But if your local regulations require that you squeeze those caudal lobes together, then your mismeasurement or accurate measurement could be the difference between a night's meal and a costly ticket. And secondly, it's imperative to know whether your measurements need to be made on a non-contouring plane or a contouring plane. And what I mean by that is do your measurements need to take the form of the fish that you're measuring or they do, do they need to be along a straight axis. So, a non-contouring measurer would be this drywall T-square. It's rigid and hard and it's not going to contour to the shape of the fish. Same with this little ruler. Or, do you need to use something that's going to contour, such as a measuring tape? 95% of the time you're not going to be making measurements that contour to the shape of the fish. This is why I suggest that if you don't have a large rigid measuring device or a measuring device that's acceptable for the sizes of the fishes that you're going after, that you take something on board your boat or along shore that will provide you with an accurate rigid measurement. For me, I have a lot of excess hockey sticks laying around my house. So all you have to do is take your measuring device that does contour, make your measurements, and then you're just going to make a notch in the wood. That's easy. Overall, before we get into our measurements, it's absolutely essential to know why you are making those measurements, whether it be for a tournament, a study, or just for fun. The key to remember is consistency. If everyone in a tournament is measuring their fish one way, then everyone needs to be measuring their fish the exact same way. That's why ichthyologists and scientists have their set of rules. So there's that universal agreement. And before we get to measuring the fishes, there's just one last thing I need to show you. And that's the four directionalities for knowing the morphological distinctions. The front of the fish, where the head is, is the anterior portion of the fish, aka the cranial region. Opposite of that, near the tail, is the posterior or posterior end, aka the caudal region. On the back, we call that the dorsal region, and near the breast and belly, that is the ventral region. You should practice this. If you're an outdoors person, professionally or recreationally, interested in working with animals or within the natural sciences, this is essential to have down. These directions also work for other animals within zoology, like this dog for instance. And one last thing, be mindful of the fish that you're measuring. If you plan on releasing the fish, be very gentle, moisten your hands before grabbing them, and release them as quickly as you can. And if you plan on keeping a fish, well, there's no reason to put it through any more discomfort than need be. The first measurement we're gonna look at is head length. 
and that's usually measured from the tip of the snout or mouth, whichever is most anterior, to the most posterior portion of the operculum, or to its dorsal articulation with the cranium. Snout length is usually measured from the tip of the snout or mouth to the most anterior part of the eye or orbit. Body depth. This is the maximum distance between the dorsal and ventral portions of the fish. This is a vertical measurement. Girth is different, in that you are measuring the maximum circumference around the fish, i.e. you are wrapping a contouring measuring device around the fish. Body depth is not measured with a contouring measurer. Total length. Now this is what I was referring to earlier when mentioning the differences between how ichthyologists and marine biologists measure fishes in most wildlife agencies. Again, with the mouth closed, measure from the most anterior part of the fish, be it the snout or mouth all the way to the most posterior part of the caudal fin. This is a horizontal measurement. Do not measure at an angle. Fork length. Oftentimes your local gaming officials will ask you that you measure fork length for certain species. This is the measurement from the most anterior part of the snout, or mouth, to the central caudal rays. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has some poignant illustrations to aid. Standard length. This measurement is taken from the most anterior part of the fish to the most posterior part of the last hyperal bone of the caudal peduncle. This is found by bending the tail fin and noting the crease. It's not too obvious on all species, and it's very unlikely that gaming officials will ask you for this measurement. Thanks for watching. I hope I was able to help out some of you, and happy hunting and good luck with your studies. Mmm, rico. <laughs>